It's a joy to be here. We almost couldn't find you, but uh, the when you get on the computer and find out what places to turn, it's not always understandable. <laughs> but anyway, we made it. We, we were anxious to get acquainted with you, and we are so pleased that we have this opportunity. The emphasis that I want to make today is found in that last section of those first nine verses. It would be verse number eight. When Jesus says to them, to the disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But he says before that, I want you to tarry in Jerusalem. How many of you have been to Jerusalem? Have any of you been to Jerusalem? Yes, Pastor, you've been. I've been several times and it's a wonderful place. I feel like I'm at home when I'm in Jerusalem. I walk the streets where Jesus walked. I understand the Via Dolorosa on the way to the cross. And if you ever had the chance, why go? We've been uh, in Korea, but it was a short time. But we want you to know we're glad to be with you today. Let me start with a story. A few weeks ago, in fact, very few weeks ago, a lady who's 93 years old called me on my phone. And she said, uh, Pastor Riggs, would you come to my house and pray with me? I said, well, certainly. She said, I'm going to have surgery on Friday. And the doctor told me that I might not make it. I might not live through the surgery. And she said, I have been uh, going to church all my life. And several years ago, I was born again. I became a Christian. But I keep hearing the word sanctify in our new church. What does that mean? I don't want to go to surgery and not have everything that God wants me to have. Am I talking too fast? Okay, I, if, you, if you want to stop me, you can. All right. And she said, please come to my home. And so I went to her home. She had been going to the church that we had started going to after we had retired. And, and the, new, the pastor was gone and the new pastor hadn't come. So she said, I felt free to call you. Well, we talked about the scripture that I'm going to talk about today here. And we talked about how a person can come to the place where you can be sanctified. The word sanctify means to be set apart for a specific purpose. And the disciples, when they were with Jesus in Jerusalem in the upper room, the reason he told them to wait is because they weren't ready to evangelize or to take the word of God to the, to the world as they knew it. And so he said, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. That's what it means to be sanctified. The word Sabbath, for instance, is the word, the root of it is taken from the word sanctify and vice versa. It means that that Sabbath day is set apart for a specific purpose, like you are here today worshiping on the Sabbath. But also, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life in a sanctified manner, you are set apart. You are filled. Not only were the Jews filled with the Spirit, but the Gentiles. As you remember, Pastor Park probably told you about that experience. You know, there are a lot of people that di differ that from the Free Methodist uh, doctrine or the background of John Wesley and Methodism. Let me tell you just a little bit about the opposite. There are some churches where they, where they teach that God predestined us. And if he doesn't predestine us or determine ahead of time that we're going to go to heaven, then we won't. But we don't believe that. We believe it's a free choice. We can decide if we want to serve the Lord. We can decide if we want him to fill us with his spirit as it was at Pentecost after they had waited those 10 days. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit along with a total of 120 on that day. Also, some, some churches believe that the atonement cannot come unless God has said, yes, you are the one that is able to take the atonement. 
But the scripture tells us that that isn't the way it is. The scripture tells us that by choice we can tarry before God and ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And then when the Holy Spirit comes, it may not come in the same way it did on the day of Pentecost, but it will come, he will come and fill our lives and make us to be recipients of his divine grace. In Hebrews 13, 12, we read, Therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify or set you apart, the people with his blood suffered outside the gate. The whole coming of Jesus Christ was not just that we might be forgiven of our sins, but that we might go on to be filled with the Holy Spirit. John Wesley referred to this work of grace, grace as initial sanctification. Now there are some people believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. We don't teach that. John Wesley didn't teach that. John Calvin taught that. It's a different kind of understanding in some churches where they believe that once you're converted, you go to heaven whether you want to or not. You have what they call eternal security. But I'm here to say that this scripture that we have just read talks to us about tarrying until the Holy Spirit comes. And Jesus himself is the one that said that. Now, entire sanctification also is continued by spiritual growth. We learn things every day. We learn things especially every time we read the scripture about how we are to live. For instance, David in the Psalm 51 said, Surely I was sinful at birth from the time that my mother conceived me. And when a person becomes born again in the spiritual life, that's a... The Holy Spirit is involved, but not to the point where they are completely filled with the Spirit of God. And they live day by day in the will of God. When we are converted then, we need to realize that we have had our sins forgiven for that that we have committed that's wrong. But according to Apostle Paul in 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, he said, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, and may your whole spirit and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the one who calls it is faithful, and he will do it. In other words, he will fill you with his spirit. So we tarry before him. We ask God to give us everything. And this lady that, Mrs. Shaw, that asked me to come and see her, I talked with her for about an hour, and I'm not going to take, take an hour to talk to you. That wouldn't be fair to you. But <laughs> uh, we, we went to our knees. We knelt by the couch in her living room, and we prayed together. And all of a sudden, she said, Pastor! I'm sanctified. I feel the power and the presence of God. I'm willing to go be operated on and I'll know that the Holy Spirit will be with me and if I don't make it, then I'll go to heaven. That's what she said. I am now sanctified. And so God's will for us is to be filled with his spirit. For us to know that there is more than conversion, though that's initially important. For instance, look at the disciples. Look at Simon Peter with me. Simon Peter, you remember, denied his Lord. He said, I don't have anything to do with that man when they were accusing him as outside the gate when there was trial going on. I don't know this man. A young lady said, oh, I know you're with Jesus. And he says, no, I'm not. Now, he was a follower of Jesus at that time, but he wasn't willing to admit it. But the thing that's so thrilling to me about Simon Peter is that Jesus knew that on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit had come, and they were baptized with tongues of fire, as you read in the scripture, have read many times, I'm sure, that he was going to be, and this is an overwhelming thing to me, he was on that day going to be the preacher. The one that had denied Jesus. Now all of a sudden because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was going to be the preacher on the day of Pentecost and was going to be able to be the kind of an evangel that God wanted him to be. As a matter of fact, he and the other disciples were even to work miracles. 
Not before Pentecost. Not before they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was after they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the thrilling thing to me as a pastor for 50 some years that I know when people come to the place where the Holy Spirit comes and just fills their whole being and the joy of the Lord is so vital and vibrant that they find guidance from him each day. I remember one night I was awake in the middle of the night and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, not audibly, but I knew what he was saying. He said to me, I want you to pray for your granddaughter, who, by the way, is living with us in, in Indianapolis at, or Greenwood and going to university there. She's a wonderful Christian. He said, I want you to pray for her. Well, I didn't know why. But you see, I had been prompted by the Holy Spirit. And so I got up from my bed and I knelt beside my bed. And in fact, I went into the other room and prayed. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen to Emily, but I just know that you've told me to pray for her. Well, that next day, her mother called and she said, Dad, I want you to know that Emily was up on the, the stairway of, a, of our swimming pool. Now, it isn't often that par parsonages have a swimming pool, but this church did in Southern California. And she was about three years old. And she fell from the top of that swimming pool. And she fell right on her head on concrete. And her mother called and she said, Dad, you told me that you had been awakened in the night to pray for, our, for my daughter, for your granddaughter. And now I know why. Because we took her to the doctor and the doctor says, I don't know why it didn't break her neck. I don't know why it didn't make a bad scar. But he said... There must have been an angel that had lifted her up from causing her to be hurt so badly. You see, the Holy Spirit is faithful. He not only had her grandfather to pray for her, but he had an angel there to take care of her from being actually killed. You see, the Holy Spirit just wants to live in our lives and he wants to make our lives the kind of life that ought to be. I think of my favorite disciple, who's Andrew. Andrew was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was one of those on the day of Pentecost that was filled with the Holy Spirit. And Andrew found the loaves and the fishes. You remember when Jesus fed the 5,000 women plus men and children? Well, Andrew was prompted to talk to this little boy. You see, the thing that's thrilling to me, and I, I have trouble standing still when I'm, when I'm preaching, but the thing that's thrilling to me is that God wants to come into our lives in the fullness of his spirit. And he wants us to realize that there's more to it than saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins. It's to being asking him to fill us with his Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thanks be to God for his goodness and his mercy. To all of us. Acts 4 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they were assembled together, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Their lives were changed. And that's what God wants to do for us. I, I came across some hymns this week, and I cut them out of the book, and my wife will glue them back in. <laughs> but one of them goes like this. Hover o'er me, Holy Spirit. Bathe thy trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, O oh come, and fill me now. You know, some of these hymns, I miss the hymns. <laughs> Sometimes in the church where we're attending now, we, we don't sing enough hymns, but I love hymns because they, they teach us so much. And as a boy, my dad was a pastor. And I learned an awful lot of, an awfully lot of theology. The second verse says, Thou canst fill me, gracious spirit, though I cannot yet tell you how. But I need thee, greatly need thee. Come, O oh, come, and fill me now. You see, friends, I get worked up in my own heart when I think about it. God wants to take your life and he wants to take my life and he wants to make us radiant Christians and so that people who live next door to us or where we work or wherever it may be, it's obvious to them that you're filled with the power of God. The third verse says, I am weak in fullness weakness. 
At thy sacred feet I bow. Bless, bless divine, eternal spirit. Fill with love. Fill me now. Cleanse and comfort. Bless and save me. Bathe, O oh, breathe my heart and brow. Thou art comforting and saving. Thou art sweetly filling now. Here's another one by this one from Oswald Smith. Some I know pastors has read from Oswald Smith. Lord, I come confessing all. At thy feet I humbly fall. Cleanse my heart from every sin and make me pure and clean within. When I was a teenage boy, my dad was a preacher and I... I, I didn't want to be a preacher, but I knew that if I gave my heart to the Lord, I'd have to become a minister. I tell people I wanted to be rich, and I knew preachers weren't rich. So, But that's, that was just a funny. Anyway, as, as, as I walked my life into to college, and on beyond that, but I had a whole different attitude in my mind when I went forward, gave my whole self to the Lord, and asked him to fill me with his presence. It's kind of like that hymn that goes, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from earth through all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as thou art, and make me love thee as I ought to love. Teach me to love thee as thine angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame. The baptism of the heavenly descended dove. My heart and altar. Thy love a flame. I just get so excited. Since the Holy Spirit abides, life can take on a greater dimension. And we can find ourselves not only forgiven of our sins, but also filled with his power and presence and growing in his will every day. So we can do that. If we do what Jesus said, tarry till you be endued with power from on high. I don't know you folks yet. I, I'm anxious to get to know you. Do we meet somewhere afterwards? Yeah, good. I want to meet with you. And I want you to talk to me. I want you to share with me what God's doing in your life as we meet together after, after the service today. But remember, the theme of this scripture is wait until you be endued with power from on high. And then God will work miracles in your life and he will bless you beyond words. And the power of the Holy Spirit can fill this church until it will be filled with people because they want to know the power and the Spirit of God in a mighty way. Praise be to God. I, I love the way you sing out. I can hear you. And the way you, you led us in prayer. Just, just think that God in his goodness and mercy loves every one of you. And he wants to give you the full bit or the full amount of his Spirit. And remember, the word sanctify means to be set apart for a specific purpose. I want you to realize this. God knows you. Maybe I don't know all of you, but God knows you. And he wants to give you everything you can take in his goodness and mercy and power and blessing. And he will, if you let him. Let's pray. Lord, our Father, thank you for our lives together. Thank you for the joy of the Lord we can know and understand. Thank you for the blessings that we can receive from your power and presence. And as we sing in a moment, we're singing a different number than the one in the, in, in the bulletin. If you'll turn to 354, it's all for Jesus. If we can say, I want all for you, dear Lord. I want to live to glorify you. And I'm going to weep, tarry until I be endued with power from on high. And while we sing that song, if there are any of you who would like to come forward and, and pray, I'd love to have you come and I'd love to pray with you. But may God bless you as we sing together. All for Jesus. All for Jesus. Did I have the number right? 354? Okay, shall we stand and sing together, please?